I mean, you know, overall, he's a good guy, right? If you really want to have what you want, you got to get rid of that obstacle. Once again, it's not a new rule. It's an invitation. This man is missing the true treasure, which was right in front of him. Jesus put God first, right? His father, who went to the cross. He died there. Difference in Christ as we gather together to uh, listen to God's word and have the Holy Spirit uh, be poured upon us through that word uh, for us to understand and for our lives to be changed and for other lives to be changed. We have um, this uh, particular story of Jesus and uh, a rich young man um, in another gospel. He's called uh, Ruler, so he's probably one of the elders in the uh, synagogue probably had some uh, status in the community and uh, family presence in the community, all those sorts of, of things that come with, with that position and with, uh, with money. Um, and uh, um, I like happy ending stories. This is not a happy ending story, okay? And it's kind of rare uh, in most of the Bible stories that it's not a happy ending story. Uh, and uh, Mark kind of leaves the you know, what might have happened, you know, still open. Uh, and what it does show, though, and the focus really is more about showing us about the nature of God, who God truly is, uh, in Jesus coming into our world. And it begins, as Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to in etern inherit eternal life? So Jesus has some kind of plans. Uh, he's about to go or do something and it's interrupted. Now, the first thing we know about, about the nature of God is, his, his, um, uh, is he listens, his patience. He lets his agenda be interrupted for what's most important, which in this whole story is that Jesus and that man. Okay, that's, that's the focus. Disciples hanging around, crowds are around, who knows, they're getting fidgety because why aren't we moving on? Other people are listening in. Uh, and a uh, good teacher, he asks, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Well, Jesus does a great way of never giving a direct answer to anything. Uh, his goal is always to help people think and help us to think. Okay? Christianity is so much more about, about our reflection, thinking, using what God has given to us, and then to even learn together, grow together, and share that with each other. And he says, why do you call me good? Jesus answered, no one is good except God alone. And, and he only recognized him as a rabbi. Okay, so I mean, he wasn't thinking, oh, this is the son of God. Uh, probably had heard about his miracles. But it, from his position, uh, Jesus is this, this one that has these great teachings. Okay, and he's unsettled though, right? We find out a little later, he's got plenty of money, more than he can, you know, use or need. And, um, um, but he's not sure, am I in? Am I in? Well, that, that's a question for people that uh, are wondering, caring, and searching out God. Am I really in? In, in the sense, what do I do? And he uses the word inherit. Am I in the will? Um, and eternal life. Now, eternal life, you know, for the Jewish context was the age to come. It really was a place on earth, which is really what the New Testament teaches, a restoration of new heaven, new earth coming together. You know, don't think heaven in the sense of... Um, you know, how we've kind of pictured it over the years. Uh, but it is, is this time to come when all things are right and in order. He didn't want to miss out on that. I mean, he's, you know, overall, he's a good guy, right? He doesn't want to miss out on that. He's responsible. He's, he's, he's even striving to do the good things that God wants him to do. And then what Jesus really said, when you call me good... Only God is good. He's saying, well, by the way, you're not that good, right? Meaning, meaning you're, you know, you really do need something here. And then he says, you know the commandments. You shall not murder, commit adultery, steal, fall, give false testimony, defraud, honor your father and, and mother. And so he's speaking to what the man felt he could control, had controlled, did control. He's like anyone that I've met on occasion. Um, that says, well, I keep the commandments, I don't sin, I never murdered anyone, so I didn't, you know, I didn't kill. And, and, um, um, and he's, he, in teacher, he declares, all these I have kept since I was a boy. A little pride going in there. And um, Jesus specifically took those commandments out of the ten to say, okay, yeah, the, that arena we can, we can do pretty well in overall. Not perfectly, 
but we can do pretty well and we can strive for that. Uh, but th he's also thinking what, what to do, you know, what, what helps this happen for me. And this is where the focus really is on Jesus and that man in front of him. It shows his patience, it shows his persistence. He's listening to him and then it says Jesus looked at him and loved him. Now how powerful is that? Jesus looked at him and loved him. Well, when we come in the presence of Jesus, he looks at us and he loves us. And he listens to us. And we have that access of faith through prayer. He knows what's on our hearts. He knows the things that are going on inside all of us. He looks at us and loves us. But he's also honest about us. He also knows what's getting in the way of a relationship with God or getting in the way of a relationship with other people or taking care of neighbor. As he says, one thing you lack, he said, go sell everything you have and give it to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Now, what I really want us to understand is he's not giving a new commandment. Go sell everything. Okay. What he's really giving him is good advice. This is not a new command for Christians, even though there's times when we should sell our, sell our uh, resources, if you will, and give them to the common good and the work of the church. But he says, when you ask, go sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you have treasures in heaven. There's an obstacle in your life. I'm pointing it out to you. If you want to inherit in eternal life, and by the way, inherit isn't what you earn. It's what you're given, right? Okay. So it goes to... So if, if you really want to have what you want, you got to get rid of that obstacle. Throw out your idol. Throw out your covetousness and your greed. Throw that out. Okay. One thing you lack, and you show it by giving it away. Give it to the poor, and you will have treasure where? In heaven. Once again, in that age to come. And then it gets to where that real true treasure is. Then come, follow me. Once again, it's not a new rule. It's an invitation. If you, want, if you really want what you desire, this is how you're going to get it. Let's go to the first commandment. You shall have no other gods before me. You've got to get rid of some stuff in our lives. And we all have some of that, even, even as we know that we live in that faith relationship with God. What we do forget, and our world has forgotten, is that God does have the right to be first in our lives. And what's the reaction, our sinful reaction to anyone that says, yes, I should be worshipped. Sounds kind of conceited, right, or prideful. Worship me. Give me all the glory. I'm the greatest. Because he is. He's a creator. He laid everything out there. We're the one with the problem. And our sin of pride and self-centeredness has us rebel against that. And we're always trying to find another way. We always say, well, I want to be a part of this. So on, on some sides, it's, I don't want to follow your rules. I want to actually end up, and people do immoral, you know, immoral things and, and evil. This man says, no, I want to do, I want my share of it. I want to be included in this. What must I do? And Jesus just says, well, let me give you some advice. Get rid of those obstacles. And then come follow me. In fact, it's a very, once again, loving, endearing. It'd almost be like, hey, buddy, come along. Come along. You know what's sad about this story? There were very few personal invitations where the person didn't follow Jesus. There's times when the crowd turned away from him and said, oh, your teaching's too hard. You know, we can't follow that. Or, or he disappointed them because he didn't turn out to be just miracle. But this is a sad story. It's a sad story in that... Um, it says, it go, uh, Mark goes on to say, uh, at this man, at this the man's face fell, face fell, he went away sad because he had great wealth. He chose his God. He chose his, to trust in his riches. And in that way, um, instead of Jesus, and Jesus really did answer his question. Let's look in your heart, let's see what's going on. We do that all the time. We've had confession here, Right? It's always a call to repentance. It's always Jesus speaking the truth to us in love. He always wants you. He wants you. He wants for us to turn away from our sin. Wanting you is Jesus put God first, right? His Father. He went to the cross. He died there. 
He sacrificed, gave himself up so that we could have this relationship with God, that we'd be empowered and even able to follow him, that we would have the Holy Spirit with insights and understanding. And so um, as we, we do have a good news ending to this story, right? What about you? What about you? Yes, we believe. Yes, we will be a part of the age to come, heaven, if you will. We do have the true treasure, Jesus Christ. This man is missing the true treasure, which was right in front of him. And it certainly wasn't, uh, you know, the kind of that, that, you know, silver and gold. In fact, Peter tells us that we were bought by his precious blood, not with silver and gold. Can't do it that way. Can't do it on our own. Can't do it by what we have to offer God. And to understand that God calls us then to fully trust and rely on him. He showed his lack of faith or understanding by holding on to his riches. Great passage uh, and great songs that we have. Uh, Seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God. And all this will be added to you. God provides. God does provide. He is truly um, our God. And he does forgive. And oh, we need that so much. We seek first him and his will and his kingdom. And he provides for the work of the church, for caring for individuals and families, caring for our, our communities, our nation, and even the nations of the world. Uh, and to believe that. So we have not missed the true treasure. We rejoice. We're celebrating Jesus is alive. We have a good news story, and we have a good news story to share out there. The rest of the day, I don't know who you're going to meet at mini golf today, but maybe someone will be in conversation. So why are you, you know, knocking those balls out of the little whatever? You think this is a driving range or something? Well, okay. Oh, and then, excuse me, mission trips or, you know, what, I don't know what the conversations will be. I'll be. I know Jesus will be there. You know, Holy Spirit will be there. I know God's people with the Holy Spirit are going to be there. Who knows? We're not going to force it on anyone. It may just be good fellowship for Holy Cross folks and friends. Hey, I hear some friends are coming along. Who knows what kind of impression that will make relationally or building, being a blessing to each other. We've got the good news. We're celebrating the good news. But the good news is for out there. Did the man ever return? We don't know. But prayerfully, he did. But notice, God is patient, and he is persistent, that that man still had time, right? And there's no way that Jesus gave up on that man. And to know that he does the same for us and for all those he loves that he is connecting us to. Good news story. Hey, we have a happy ending. I like that. May God bless you as um, we share the good news of the story of the gospel of Jesus and the grace that he gives and that he helps us to set other things aside and put God first. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in true faith and to life everlasting. In Jesus' name, amen.